The auto loan delinquency rate has surpassed recession era highs and some car pricing information today. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy here today with amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. We've also got some charts for you today which factually show where car prices have gone over the past two years and what needs to happen to bring them in line with historical levels. Well, Liz, we unfortunately knew this day would come. Sure. With inflation and cost of living out of control for so many people, an affordable life as we knew it not long ago just isn't happening for people right now. The pressure created by a terrible economy on the finances of American families has been going on for far too long. There's only so much that people can take. An increase in delinquencies was bound to happen. Indeed. The 60-day auto loan delinquency category exceeded recession-era highs in the first quarter of 2023, S&P Global Mobility said in the Auto Credit Insights report released last Tuesday. Unfortunately, the spike is primarily among borrowers in the subprime tier. To some extent, it could be expected since subprime is a category of people with already very damaged credit, sure. so they're at a higher credit risk to begin with. But it's also a bit sad because their economic woes are only getting worse. Auto loans that were more than 60 days past due reached 1.69% in the first three months of 2023. That tops recession era highs of around 1.46% in 2009 and 2010, and 1.43% recorded in the first quarter of 2022. For comparison's sake, here's a look at data over the years prior to the pandemic. As you can see, the 60-day delinquent category in 2018 was at 0.83%, well below what we're seeing now. 2019 was also at 0.83%, but dipped to 0.64% in what was a strong economy in 2020, before going back up to 0.87% in 2021. You know what's really interesting is how many people were also in the 30-day delinquent category. Mm -hmm. The percentages were a bit higher. In 2018, 2.43% were 30 days delinquent. It dropped down to 1.81% in 2020, but bounced back up to 231 in 2022, that number has ballooned significantly here in the first quarter of 2023 with a whopping 6.6% of car loans sitting at 30 days delinquent. No wonder the 60 day category is so ballooned. That's crazy. But let's also take a look back on what's happened to pricing and fees. I say pricing and fees because they combine to make up the actual sale price of Indeed a car. Indeed they do. In the fourth quarter of 2020, the average new car loan was 35 for 20. That number jumped to 39,834 in the fourth quarter of 2021, a jump of $4,414, or a 12.46% increase. Then in the fourth quarter of 2022, the average new car loan was 41,445. That's a $6,025 increase, or a 17% increase over the 2020 car loans. We also see a dramatic increase in used car loans. Yeah. Used car loans went from 22,643 in fourth quarter of 2020 to 27390 in fourth quarter of 2021, a jump of $4,747 or nearly a 21% increase. Amazing that the used car loans made a bigger jump in actual dollars and in percentage both. Then we see fourth quarter 2022 jumped again to 27760 a $5,117 increase over 2020 and a 22.5% jump. In actual dollars, the increase is less than new, but the percentage is significantly larger, 17% versus 22.5% increase. Without the actual data, I think many people would be convinced that price has jumped by a lot more than that, but it's actually less than we might have thought it was. Yes, I think one of the factors that contributes to that impression is that dealers have been more ruthless than ever when it comes to forcing fees and add-ons onto their customers. The pandemic comes along and dealers pull back the curtain, no longer trying to hide the fact that greed really drives so many of them. Currently, independent lenders who focus on lending to subprime borrowers, specifically on car loans for used vehicle purchases, are feeling the squeeze. As we've said, inflation and high interest rates are contributing factors for the increase in delinquency that we're seeing. Jill Loudon, Product Management Associate Director for S&P Global Mobility, said... The interest rate rise is squeezing the monthly budget for an average American consumer. Consumers set aside money monthly for housing, vehicles, and insurance, but may not pay other obligations with the same frequency, such as medical bills and credit cards. People need their vehicles to get to work to make money and pay their obligations. Exactly. 
The pandemic saw many lenders actually retreat from the subprime tier, which made up just 12.3% of account volume in the first quarter of 2021 and 12.9% in the first quarter of 2022, before bouncing back to 14.2% for the first three months of this year. Subprime volumes hovered around 15% before the pandemic. That doesn't mean there are fewer people in the subprime categories. It simply means that fewer of them are able to procure a loan right now. The report indicates that the high delinquency rate has encouraged captive finance companies, banks, credit unions, and independent lenders to tighten underwriting standards. You can find out more about this in our recent show, Car Loans Are Playing Hard to Get. THG shows how to succeed anyway. Combined with high interest rates and lower used car inventories, this has led to a decrease in loan originations. There were 15.3% fewer originations in the fourth quarter of 2022 than in the same quarter of 2019, according to this report. Perhaps you're not someone who will fall behind on your car loan payments. So for you, the silver lining in this report is that loan defaults add cars back into inventory that were out of circulation because they were on the road previously. It goes without saying that some will benefit from the misfortune of others, and that's also true in this case. Somebody loses their car, which isn't necessarily a good thing, and potentially somebody else gains a vehicle as a result. But it's not all bad news when it comes to auto loans. Vintage performance, which measures how an account performs over a certain period after the loan is originated, shows relative strength in the new vehicle segment. Recent vintage performance levels are at pre-pandemic lows, performing better than pre-pandemic portfolios at the same age. This actually doesn't surprise me too much since not many new cars are sold to the subprime credit crowd. Sure. Satyan Merchant, Senior Vice President and Automotive Business Leader at TransUnion said, We continue to pay close attention to delinquencies while seeing positive signs about vintage data. Well, at least there is a bright side. I agree. On the used vehicle side, the first half of 2022 saw vintage delinquency rates for 5 to 10 months from origination elevated above prior years. In the second half of the year, rates fell back in line with historic pre-pandemic levels. In related news, the Fed is currently holding the rate steady, but sees two more small hikes coming before the end of the year. The higher rate outlook coincides with an improved view of the economy and consequently slower progress in returning inflation to the central bank's 2% target. The Federal Reserve's rate increases leads to higher borrowing costs for consumers seeking new and used vehicle loans and other forms of credit. It can also affect the housing and construction markets, key drivers of light truck demand for all those independent contractors out there. The central bank's policy rate, which influences household and business borrowing costs throughout the economy, rose a full 5 percentage points from the onset of the tightening cycle in March 2022, reaching the highest level since just before the start of the 2007-2009 recession. The bottom line is this. Let's bring that chart back up with the fourth quarter results of new and used car loans in the past three years. It helps to answer the question about where pricing must get to to get in line with historical pricing trends. Great idea, Liz. Friends, take a look at these numbers. You'd expect some increase, but a 22.5% jump in used car loans and a 17% increase in new car loans in just two years is way beyond the pace the market was moving at under normal conditions. Right. It seems like it's really high time for it to go back, but with manufacturers having moved away from lower trim levels in the last two years, it's going to take a while for the new car pricing to recover to more normal levels. Also, with used car inventory being pinched, used car pricing will also take a while, and many experts are saying that it will be sometime in 2024 before numbers are more along the lines of what most consumers expect to be available on the market. We see that day coming too, but it's a slower process than most people would hope for. Well, friends, we are in the midst of launching our long-awaited, homework guy-assisted, hassle-free new car buying process, and it is likely to be a Toyota in the state of Florida. On the other side of the country, California is also an early adopter state too, likely to go live sometime soon. Shortly, we will launch a show sharing more details of how this will all work. If you jumped on our notification waitlist, don't be surprised when I call you and say, Hello, my friend. This is the homework guy. We are now ready to help you buy a new car. By the way, it's not too late to get on the list, and tons of people are doing that every day. Find the link in the description box down below the video, or visit our website, thehomeworkguy.com, to find it. As always, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications. And give this video a like if you appreciate what we do here for you. Right here, courtesy of the Homework Guy team in our show, is where you'll always find the most dependable tips and helpful information to assist you with finding an enjoyable car buying experience in today's car market. And we so appreciate the trust and confidence that thousands of you have shown us by getting on the notification list for the new hassle-free car buyers notification. If you're new here, we invite you to join our huge YouTube family. 
If you've just recently joined us as a subscriber, we thank you, appreciate you, and welcome you aboard. Also, thanks again to our many faithful followers who just keep coming back, and to all of our longtime subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. The Homework Guy team is serving truth and justice in the car business and always will. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.